Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. We finished the last episode watching the uh, my new ship, the Volcano, flying off from um, Norvis back to Miokin, where it's going to pick up a load more um, a load more Vulcanite to bring back to Norvis for basically mostly mostly to be honest for use in uh, making um, in, in smelting things. So that's going to be um, doing the doing the trips back and forth for a while before we actually get enough through that we can start. To really uh before before we get enough through that it can sort of have a bit of a rest while while everything else catches up or uses uses that uh, vulcanite so that's got me down to about here we built the beaming receiver we built the vulcanite processing and i've set up a spaceship for Vulc to take vulcanite from myokin to norvis and also taking water from norvis to myokin um for the for the for the, pulp, for the power plant up here so this so we've got the spaceship landing here it gets loaded up with vulcanite and whatever stone is available, um, and it unloads water and meteorite defense ammunition here. So it's it's taking it's actually carrying stuff both ways, which is quite nice. Uh, it's an it's, it's an improvement over previous systems, perhaps. <laughs> um, in that it's it's actually it's actually yeah, um, yeah. It's it's a nice thing about spaceships is you can transport stuff back and forth because you're you've got the uh, the, the flexibility of having that ship flying back and forth. Now if there were solids that we required over here, it'd be even better because we'd be able to use the same warehouses on the ship. But liquids and solids require different things. I could freeze it all into ice, but I decided I decided it's not worth it. It's not worth using the extra cryonite and the extra sort of space taken up on that sort of thing. So the other thing I needed on uh, Miokin to, in order to get this working was I needed a supply of Vulcanite. And that's pretty straightforward. I dropped in my usual mine design down here. Um, it's loading up a station. And then over here, there's another mine and another mine. And both of these are loading the same station. Although this one appears to have got damaged. So I'm going to need to come over and fix these belts up. That's annoying because that must have happened before I got the, uh, the meteorite defense guns in. Because this is clearly meteorite damage. So that is, yeah quite annoying. I don't know if I've got the belts for that, but at some, at some point I'll have to go over and fix that. The next thing on my to-do list was the core chunk processing. So what I, the next thing I did was I built up these uh, core miners here. Now there's, there's six of them because the more of them you put in, the less each drill pulls up and they all use quite a lot of power as well. So I decided the most effective, the most, the best number I decided fairly arbitrarily was to have six of them. And as you can see, that's producing a steady dribble of the um, of the core chunks. Now, if it was a bigger planet, these core chunks would be coming out faster. It's not, so they're not. But Celavi, it does mean that this this core chunk processing system is a bit over spec for what's coming out. But again, never mind. So what we're doing with this is we're then crushing the the uh, core chunks and on. And because, as you can see, these are the red um, vulcanite core chunks that are coming out because we're on a vulcanite planet. Those get split out into... Um, a, the, you get vulcanite, you get normal core chunks, the grey ones, and you get a little bit of stone. So down here we've got a, a, we've got lots and lots of um, splitters that are sorting all of that, all of the ore that's coming through. We're sorting out the vulcanite that's going into another station over here. And this one, using the magic of LTN, is prioritised at... Uh, well, I've given it a priority of 10, fairly arbitrarily, but it's greater than the zero that the other stations are prioritised at. <clears throat> so, my train will, will by default come to this station first in order to pick up Vulcanite and take it up here to be processed. And then if there's none available here, then it will go off to the other stations. So, this one should always be the priority. It should always come here first. We're also collecting up the uh, core chunks and the uh, stone in these two um, warehouses down here. And the plan is that eventually, when we've got enough of them, uh, there's another set of splitters here sorting it, obviously. Um, once we've got enough of them, we'll then send a spaceship in and we'll transport these back to Norvis. And then we'll be able to do some extra processing there. <clears throat> so that's the sort of the... Um, the next step is, is to take the um, core chunks from Myokin to Norvis. And that, way, that will allow me to... Um, then start processing them there because the thing is that I've noticed if we have a look at Norvis and go over to map mode I've got an awful lot of mines around here that are just have run out so we've got an empty uranium mine here we've got another empty uranium mine here we've got there was another uranium mine here but I pulled it up because it was empty we've got an iron mine here that's run out we've got an, a copper mine here that's run out you might be noticing a bit of a theme here copper mines dead iron mines dead they're all Another copper mine that's basically dead. They're all practically out. Okay, this one's got this one's got some left, and this one has as well. But there's a massive shortage of um, of resources on Norvis. Now, th there are a few possibilities here. I could try and expand out because yeah, there's going to be some um, there's going to be some patches of ore. I mean, there's, a, there's a nice eight million iron there. There's probably some co there's three million copper there. 
and so on. So there another three million there. So there are some patches, but they're all outside my um, my base. There's two million there that is actually inside. And we've got a copper mine here that is still running. So we're not completely exhausted yet, but it's it's at a point where it's a bit of a worry. So my plan is to start. So we've got the we've got the six uh, mining drills here on Norvis, producing the produce, producing the core chunks. They're getting crushed, and when you crush the grey type core chunks, they turn into all of the different resources. So you get a little bit of vulcanite, you get copper, you get iron, you get stone, you even get coal coming out of them. So we get a bit of everything coming out of here. Um, I, I was going to look up the percentages. In fact, let, let's look up the percentages. If you look up crushing core fragments, yeah, so you get. You get some coal, you get iron, you get coal, it's, it's copper and coal and stone in almost almost as much. You get a little bit of vulcanite and you get a tiny, tiny amount of uranium ore out. But then uranium tends to go quite a long way, so maybe that's all right. But it's not quite sufficient. You can even get a little bit of oil, oil and water out as well, even better. So that should be plenty to keep this sort of system running. Um, the hopes, no, sorry. The hope is that with enough of these core miners running on different planets and all feeding down to additional crushers down here and then pumping it all through this sort of sorting system, we'll always have we'll have enough in all of these stations to keep the um, keep the system running. Now the trick is going to be balancing this um, because there's going to be a fairly high chance that one of these is going to come out in a higher proportion compared to the proportion it's used in than the others. So, for example, we saw, we saw that we produce slightly more iron than we do copper. But I have a feeling that we use more copper than we do iron. So if we have a look in here, um, let's look at consumption and let's search for ore. I don't know why it's come up with some of these things, but never mind. So if we look over the last hour, for example, then we can see that we're getting through four. We're only getting through almost 500,000 um, copper per hour, and only 183,000 iron ore per hour. So this is going to give problems. We're going to have a lot more iron ore being produced by the system than we are copper ore so we're going to have that that copper mine that i pointed out before is going to have to take up a lot of the slack with this the long-term solution for this problem is to find some copper planets like soteria and girofen and go off to those and do core mining on those in order to um in order to get a much higher proportion of copper coming out so if we look at the um a copper fragment like the copper ore fragment like this one um you get 10 copper ore out for that plus the um, whatever it is you get out of here. So you get much higher proportions of copper out of these. So that will be very worth having. Whether I'll crush the, I'll decide where to crush these later. But the, these sort of things will, will allow me to get far more of the resources out. So I'm going, I'm going to need to go off and do, and do that to get things properly balanced as all things should be. Then once that happens, in theory, that will then give me enough of everything just to keep all of my mining ticking over, uh, all of my production ticking over, sorry, and we'll and we'll stop needing to dig up stuff from on on this planet. And fingers crossed, that'll be that'll be um, that'll be enough. The other problem that I'm a bit worried about is uranium. So at the moment, as I was showing you earlier, most of my uranium mines all the way up here have, have basically died out. There's a bit left in this one, but it's not mining for some reason. Is that because it's because there's a fail in the pipes here for no good reason. Okay, I should probably go out and fix that at some point. I have put in the last stream, I did put in a new uranium mine. I can't remember where it was. Not there, obviously, because that one's empty. I think it was somewhere out this way. No, no, it was somewhere in the middle. hope it wasn't that one because that's empty already. Ah, oh, here we go. This one. Yes, yeah, so I put in a new uranium mine. It is it is working. It is digging up the uranium. It is there's 15,000 in there. Um, but it's a bit a little bit of a worry um, because I don't want to run out of um, uranium. I don't want to run out of um, nuclear fuel for the systems all the systems over here for the power generation over here. And I don't want to basically I don't want to run out of all of the other things that are that uh, rely on uranium. So at the moment there's yeah, all of the uh, uranium-238 seems to be getting turned into ammunition, um, I assume, because it's not getting through here. Oh, no, I'll take it back. It is actually getting through. So this will come along here to be made into, um, into nuclear fuel and to be fired off to other planets that need it as well. So what I plan to do in the very near future is, is replace these um, nuclear power plants with um, some more, with, with a beam a zappy zappy beamy thingy um what's the word i'm looking for with another um solar beam re uh, relay thing so i showed you in the last episode that i've got the um facility on a 
in Kalida's orbit, this one here, this is powering Miokin at the moment. Now, Miokin doesn't need a constant beam of power. So I could turn that, I can move this one around between planets. So what I plan to do, I think, is go over to, back to, um, back to uh, Norvis at some point. This isn't Norvis. Where is Norvis? It must be on the list somewhere. Norvis, there we go. Yes, go back to Norvis and replace the, um, some of these nuclear power plants with, with, a, be with a beam receiver. And that will allow me, whether whether I replace them or whether I just stick in a new one, I'm not quite sure yet. But the plan in general will be to start moving this over to, to beam power. Um, I don't know how much, the problem is I don't, I, I'll need to do the maths and work out how much, and, and re, do a bit of redesign work I think, so I can't just go with the exact design I'm using here. Which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. And we've got plenty of water on Norvis, so we can just switch over to that. That'll, that should be absolutely fine, I should be able to get a decent amount of power through that. So that's going to be the uh, the next thing I need to do for uh, for Norvis. So let's have a look at let's have a look at the to do list that I've been talking about for the uh, for the last couple of episodes. Um, I got down to, yeah I did all the stuff on Miokin. I built the beam receiver and the vulcanite processing that I showed you in the previous episode. I've got the core chunk processing that I showed you just now. I've got the rail system that I showed you just now as well. And the ships are now start, starting to run. I'm getting through this way. Then we need to repeat core mining, as I say here, for all other planets, especially copper. That's the big one, I think. I'm going to need to go out and set up a copper mining facility on one of those planets. Um, and probe silos over here, yes. But also, let's um, add in here... I think this might even be a higher priority because I'm worried about my uranium. So in here, let's put in um, beam power to Norvis and try and remember to do that. Otherwise, how is it going? Hmm. So the next thing, one of the next things to do. Let's let's have a quick check on that to, on that spaceship. The volcano has has now arrived at Miokin. Excellent. So if we now have a look down here, we'll see that the uh, the ship is no doubt being. Uh, I've gone the wrong way. The ship is actually up here. The ship is not here. The ship has not landed. Have I? Oh, I didn't put in the um, the landing clamp. And I don't know exactly where it's supposed to go. This is going to be slightly tricky. So let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at the volcano. It goes in. Okay, so it's two below the uh, the, the bottom input for the uh, of rock. Okay. So that would mean we put in the clamp here, and then I need to check what number that should be. The volcano is expecting to dock with uh, to a number seven. Okay, so we tell this to be a number seven. And then the ship docks. Bam! Just like that. There we go. Right, it's done a complete loop on automation now, so it shouldn't break any... There shouldn't be any more things that will break, <laughs> I hope. Um, but as you can see, we've now got the uh, the water being unloaded here through the pumps. That's kind of coming out fairly quickly. We've got the... Um, and we've got the uh, warehouses being filled up here with, with the vulcanite and the stone. And the uh, meteorite defense ammunition being unloaded as well. So this is all working quite nicely. Um, and is just... Yeah, it's it's just working. It's not the fastest process in the world. In the future, sometime in the future, I may well redesign my spaceships to have um, rails going into them. So a train can pull up, the spaceship arrives, the train pulls inside it, the spaceship flies off and the train gets out at the other end. And that will make it a bit quick, a bit quicker, it will make it a lot more, a lot quicker to load the spaceships up. Um, but they'll have to be even bigger. Not that that's a problem. Um, so that's going to be, that's that's a way to, Im to improve them over what I've got at the moment. But for now, this is working. I'm um, generally pretty happy with it. So it's going to take a, it takes a little while to load, as I say, but as I, I don't th I don't actually think that's a problem. So now I'm on the ship. I can head back to I head back to Norvis with it. Um, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I've got a, I've got a faster ship over here. Um, and there's a few little more th a few more things to do for the um, the the, the uh, core chunk processing yet. Yet. So that, that I'll uh, I'll get on with that, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Oh, and while I think of it, I did one, one of the other things I've done recently was, um, if we have a look at Norvis Orbit, because this is where I did all of the building work, I uh, decided it was time to upgrade my um, my armour and the stuff I carry around with me. So I've got all of these systems running across here, where we're building Jetpack 1 to make Jetpack 2 to make Jetpack 3, we're building uh, Armour 1 to make Armour 2 to make Armour 3 to make Armour 4, Roboport 1 to make Roboport 2, um, 
what's it called, RTG to make RT1 to make RTG2, battery 1 to make battery 2, and I think somewhere, although I can't remember where, I also, uh, or maybe I did, maybe I did it in my pocket. I also had to, I also ended up running through the um, different versions of the um, the thruster suit. So I've gone from a thruster suit one that I was using in the previous episodes up to two, and then up to a three, uh, which were a bit expensive. It, I had to I had to nick some of the uh, the science pack stuff to go into these, which still feels a little bit weird, but it was very worth it because now I have so much room for activities in my thruster suit. And as you can see, I put in I put in a load of extra jet packs. I put in I've got some extra armor. I was going to have two of these. I'm not sure why I haven't actually, um, but the, uh, probably because I ran out of the, um, the the ingredients for them. Um, but this is generally, in general, all of this is allowing me to be far more effective. Uh, just, uh, the biggest thing is I can just fly around so much more quickly now, which is um, rather nice. So, yeah, and one of the things I like about using a thruster suit is you can move around quickly. But if you need to move around accurately, like you want to just pull off half of one, or just off one side of a belt or something like that, you can do that by get, by dropping down to the ground and moving around slowly. And um, and also you, and you can and you can also turn on the um, the belt immunity thing without then being annoyed because you move so slowly because you can't use the belts to speed you up. So I think having the uh, the thrust at the jetpack is really really useful. And whenever we're playing Industrial Revolution, I keep hitting J trying to take off and it never works and I'm always disappointed. <laughs> The only weird thing about the uh, jetpack is you can't fly over spaceships. If you try and fly, you can't fly in a spaceship, which is fair enough because you can't fly inside, sure. But you can't fly over them either. And if you fly into the walls of them, you go bump and fall onto the floor, which is a little bit annoying, especially when you're in space. <laughs> so, as always, thank you for watching. It's been, uh, I think, been quite a productive session recently. I've got lots and lots of stuff done, um, and I'm looking forward to getting more done and just, just getting all of this sort of finished and running to running to this sort of to a higher level and, and hopefully solving all of my resource problems once and for all <laughs> we'll see how that goes though so thank you for watching don't forget to come back next friday for another episode of factorio space exploration and come along on tuesdays if you want to watch me actually building all of this stuff up and getting getting things up and running and working um, because that's when i'll be playing a lot playing on stream and getting actually doing the building work they then talk about in these in these videos there is, of course, uh, then uh, Factorio Industrial Revolution, which I'm playing with some friends of mine on stream on Thursdays. Please do come along to that as well. It's um, we're doing, I think we're doing fairly well. I actually wasn't around in the last session, so it'll be interesting to see what they got up to without me. Um, and then there's the GTA videos coming out a couple of times a week as well. So I hope there's plenty in there to keep you inter interested and amused on, on my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.